I didn't think I had to uh, use some of my five minutes to, to educate some Liberal members on uh, your particular role as an Auditor General. You're not criminal investigators. You've never been set up as a criminal investigator. So your ability to detect potential fraud or other acts of of uh, criminality in relation to what has transpired under the SDTC is not your mandate. Um, just like the ethics commissioner, if it's blatant, if it's uh, if there's an abundance of evidence, as you've indicated, you can make that referral. But the fact of the matter remains, despite the best efforts of Mr. Erskine Smith, the RCMP have confirmed an ongoing investigation. Whether or not they ask for a production order from your office remains to be seen. But the fact that they haven't doesn't necessarily mean that they won't. And I think that's the message that needs to come through to Canadians watching this. It is an ongoing investigation. They've also confirmed that they've received documents uh, from the House of Commons in relation to the House order, but they've been heavily redacted which is precisely why government and the House of Commons has come to this gridlock because of government's failure to produce all unredacted documents to the House, which can then be used by the RCMP as they see fit. Whether they look at it or not, that's entirely up to them. But in relation to the potential criminality here, uh, Madam Auditor General, and I want to remind Canadians, we're talking about potential fraud and breach of trust. Fraud is defined in the Criminal Code under Section 380 as follows. Everyone who by deceit, falsehood, or other fraudulent means, whether or not it is a false pretense, defrauds the public or any person of any property, money, or valuable security is then guilty of an indictable offense, depending on the value. Redirecting taxpayer funds to the tune of almost $400 million outside of contribution agreements, outside of the law, is in its very nature a fraudulent act. Whether or not the Crown can produce and establish intent remains to be seen. But the police will investigate at a lower standard than the Crown prosecutor who prosecutes potential fraudulent actors in relation to this scam. Let's not forget that the Assistant Deputy Minister, Mr. McConaughey, equated this to simply giving away free money. It was the equivalent of a sponsorship type scandal. That is how massive this this scam, this fraud, this crisis, this issue that is now bogging down the government operations in the House. <coughs> to ask you one final question, all of this could go away if the government simply complied with the order of the House and released all the documents pursuant to that order. Would you agree with that, Madam Auditor General? I think, as I've previously said, this dispute between the government and parliament is one they need to answer for and they need to resolve. I am, um, you know, complying to the best of my abilities with with the order, um, but ultimately the information resides and is owned by the government. Simple. This is a hypothetical. If the government continues to refuse to release the documents, we have continued deadlock. If the government complies with the order, we can get back to the business of doing government. It's a binary option. It's a binary choice. Would you agree with that? The options the government has, comply or not comply? Um, again, I think that it's up to the government to, to answer for why they are redacting or treating the information that they, the way they are. Right. Okay. Now to Mr. Uh, Ramey. Have you been contacted by the RCMP? Mr. Chair, I have not been contacted by the RCMP. Has anyone at SDTC been contacted by the RCMP? Mr. Chair, as far as I'm aware, uh, no one at SDTC has been contacted by the RCMP. How about the current board members? 
Mr. Chair, uh, I, as far as I'm aware, uh, none of the current board members have been contacted by the RCMP. Okay. And I think you've indicated this, Auditor General, I want to confirm again, you've had some conversations you've indicated with the RCMP, but they have not directly asked for anything specific. Is that correct? Or asked for any further interviews with you? Is that accurate? Um, you are correct. We we do speak to them on, on many files, but on this file, uh, we've had regular conversation and we have not received a production order. Thank you. I'm afraid that is the time, Mr. Rock. Turning now to Ms. Bradford, you have the floor for five minutes, please. <laughs>